Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Aimstone channel. Before we start with Bitcoin, I have a quick announcement. I will be having an interview with one and only Jeff Booth. So if you guys have any questions for Jeff, please comment them below and I will do my best to ask him those questions. Okay, let's start this video with Bitcoin market. Today BTC is doing quite well. In fact, it bounced back from $25,000 all the way to this current price, slightly about $26,000. So technically, Bitcoin is about $26,000 level that has been carrying on since mid-August. Yes, it's nice to be back. From technical standpoint, it looks like BTC is about to break above 50 days moment average on this 18-hour release chart. Look, it looks like in mid-August, BTC has been rejected from this 50 days moment average as well as in late August. In late August, BTC bounced back from $26,000 all the way to 28 k but it was a rejection. However, it looks like this time this could be the one. This time BTC is already broke about 50 days moving average, but now the question is will it continue to bounce back and diverge from this 50 days moving average? Personally, I hope it's going to be the case. Okay, speaking of the Bitcoin Fear Grid Index, today we are at fear, we are remaining at around 41. Yesterday we were at fear at 30. What? How does that make any sense? Well, it kind of does make sense because Yesterday, in midnight, BTC was still at around $25,000, and this is when the Sphere Grid Index was updated. However, a couple of hours later, BTC bounced back about $26,000, while the Sphere Grid Index was not updated until the next day. So there is that. Speaking of futures trading, look, there had been in the past 24 hours more than $44 million in shorts liquidated while $35 million in long liquidations. Yes, this is not a lot in the Bitcoin market at all. However, if we take a two days prior where we had that pump from $25,000 all the way to $26,000, there have been more than $70 million in shorts liquidated. Yes, playing with futures, you're just literally gambling with your money. Will I use futures anytime soon? Well, personally, I believe I will use some futures after the Bitcoin having because this is when you have high probabilities of making this decent amount of money when BTC will be confirmed that this is the bull market. And my futures trade will not be more than 2 to 3x because if you use like 5-10x, you have high probability of getting liquidated. And I, of course, do not want to be in that position. Anyway guys, let's change a little bit and take a look what happened in today's economy. As I know that inflation numbers, headline CPI, core CPI have been released today. And this is headline CPI. Look, the expectation was 3.6% and the actual numbers came up higher, 3.7%. So we can clearly say that inflation is officially re-accelerated higher. Yes, in June it was 3, July 3.2, August 3.7%. From 3.2 to 3.7, that's a huge jump. And of course, Federal Reserve and Jerome Paul will have to make some tough decisions. So where did we feel inflation the most? It looks like inflation has fallen the most at transportation 10%, shelter 7%, food away from home 6.5%, but somehow fuel oil is minus 14%, Gas utilities minus 16%. How does that make any sense if the crude oil literally skyrocketed in July as well as August? So I don't know, but somehow we came up with 3.7%. Yes, headline CPI, it re-accelerates higher while it looks like core CPI is actually dropping. Core CPI dip from 4.7% to this current 4.4% while headline CPI is of course re-accelerating. So yes guys, since the headline CPI re-accelerates, does that mean we will have high probability of another interest rate hike in September? Well, if you ask me, it would kind of make sense, but this is not what market prices in. Look, market now believes there are 95% chances that there will be no interest rate hike and only 5% chances that they will have additional 25 basis points on the table. So yes, I don't know how that makes sense, but apparently it kind of does, at least to the market. Anyway guys, let's change it a bit and move back to crypto and Bitcoin. Look at this, breaking news, Coinbase just decided to integrate 
Bitcoin Lightning Network. Brian Armstrong says Bitcoin is the most important asset in crypto. <laughs> well, tell me something else I do not know. Of course, Bitcoin is the most important asset in cryptocurrency market. Kathy Wood, Bitcoin is the world's digital monetary system and Lightning is Bitcoin's payment layer. Yes, you should not use Bitcoin blockchain as a first layer for payment system. Lightning Network is way better and faster. Moving on, Franklin Templont files for the Bitcoin ETF joins race for the crypto holy grail. Franklin Templont filed for the spot exchange trading fund Tuesday, becoming the latest traditional asset management firm to join the crowd race. In a filing with SEC, the Franklin Templot proposed a Coinbase custody ETF that would trade as a CBOE BZX exchange. Franklin Templet follows the BlackRock and other financial heavyweights who have bet that the SEC may soon allow or perhaps even be forced by court to allow a spot Bitcoin ETF to hit the public market. Such a product would give everyday investors an easy means to gain exposure to the price of Bitcoin and their brokerage accounts, alongside the stock and bonds. Yes, indeed, if Bitcoin spot ETF will be approved, it will give a green light to every single brokerage account to allow the users to buy Bitcoin and even pension funds. That would be insane. Okay, moving on. As we know that Franklin Template currently has more than $1.5 trillion in asset under management. This would be one of the largest asset under managers that apply for Bitcoin Spot ETF. Here is actually the order. First one, BlackRock, $10 trillion AUM, Fidelity, $4.5 trillion AUM, and then Franklin Template, $1.5 trillion AUM. In fact, it is at the same level where is in Vasco Galaxy, $1.5 trillion. And then we have Wisdom Tree, Bank Egg, Global X, ARK Invest, Bitwise, and Will Carry, all in billions. So total is more than 17.7 .7 trillion dollars. Do you guys know what the Bitcoin market cap right now is? Well, Bitcoin market cap right now is around 500 billion bucks. So 17.7 .7 trillion dollars. It will be more than 34x from this price. Of course, I'm not saying that BTC will make 24x anytime soon, but even 10 or even 15% of that money would flow into BTC. BTC would skyrocket it and that would be huge. Okay, now let's move on to some Bitcoin charts. This first chart, as we can see, we have FAT's balance sheet that is in this red color, and then we have logarithmic Bitcoin price that's at the top in this black color. So look, there are indeed some correlations. Whenever Fed's balance sheet goes up, it means they printed money. PTC goes up as well. That's exactly what happened in 2013 as well as 2020. But look, 2017 Fed's balance sheet was flat while BTC still skyrocketed. And right now it looks like Federal Reserve is engaged in quantitative tightening, which means they are sucking liquidity out of the economy. The balance sheet topped at $9 trillion. And right now it's closer to eight trillion dollars so technically federal reserve sucked more than one trillion dollars out of the economy but look sooner and later they will start printing money once again why because they are addicted to cheap money and bitcoin in my opinion will skyrocket either way if they print money of course btc will skyrocket even higher but even if they do not print money btc still will skyrocket just like it did back in 2017. Here is another cool chart from the rational route. This chart actually represents what happened two years prior to this current date and what happens two years after the, this current date. Right now, yes, we are in September 13. This is not 9-11 anymore. But anyway, as we can see that two years prior, every single cycle BTC has been in the bear market slash consolidation phase. And what happens two years after? That's a very important question. Well, in fact, in the previous two cycles, in the next two years, BTC literally skyrocketed. And now, the second half of this cycle is about to begin. The second half is way more exciting than the first half. Okay, guys, now let's take a look at this quick chart. Yes, this is not really logarithmic Bitcoin price action, but what this is, is just a moving average. It actually smoothed out the chart, and it's much easier to understand where we are in terms of the trend. Look, it looks like right now we are in this reddish color, similar we were back in 2020. But the huge green color is yet to be seen, possibly by the end of this year or next 
year. Okay, guys, let's change a little bit and take a look at this quick video where Michael Sunshine, a CEO of Grayscale, explains what he thinks about his win against ICC. Let's take a look. Michael, uh, it's been almost two weeks since you won your lawsuit against uh, the SEC seeking to have your Bitcoin trust convert to an ETF. The SEC has 45 days to consider an appeal. Explain to us where are we in this process? Yes, yeah, so the decision we got about two weeks ago is the culmination of years of work and about 14 months of litigation. Uh, the D.C. Circuit ruled three to zero unanimously in favor of Grayscale, vacating the SEC's denial order, which prevented GBTC from converting to an ETF. We're now in this 45 day period where we have to follow the federal rules of appellate procedure uh, that gives the SEC the opportunity, if they wish, to request a rehearing on the case. Um, the market reaction, the investor reaction has been very, very positive. Uh, there's not only a lot of enthusiasm in the underlying Bitcoin market, um, but certainly seen a tremendous tick up in volumes in GBTC and interest, um, have seen the discount to net asset value continue to shrink uh, since the decision came out. Um, but all of us, Grayscale, our investors, the team as a whole, the community, uh, waiting for this 45 day period. Yeah, so the problem here for the SEC, it seems to me, that the court squarely rejected, folks, if you didn't hear this, the, it rejected the very basis on which the SEC has been denying a spot Bitcoin ETF for the past several years. The court said, in essence, hey, you guys approved a futures-based Bitcoin product. The futures in the spot market are like products. So if you prove one, you have to approve the other. That's the rationale of the court. So I guess the question is, could the SEC come up with some new rationale why the application should not be approved and, and dare you to sue them again, come up with some other reasons. So it's certainly a possibility, Bob. Um, we recently, though, submitted a letter to the SEC since the decision came out. And one of the things we said is you've actually denied spot Bitcoin ETF applications like GBTC to the magnitude of 14 or even 15 times. So we would believe that if there was some other reason that the SEC didn't want these products from coming to market or had some other issue, it certainly would have surfaced by now in one of those other denial orders. Yeah. Um, so there's nine applications for a spot Bitcoin ETF, including yours. Um, assuming one or more are actually approved, are they all going to be approved at once? I know you've called for that to happen, right? I think the SEC um, has a real opportunity to ensure that they're not picking winners and losers in yeah. this market. Um, we have long been prepared for a world in which there are multiple spot Bitcoin products, there are multiple Bitcoin futures products on the market. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the SEC handles those applications and yeah. the variability between them. Look, Michael Sunshine believes that they made the huge score against SEC. And of course, this is very beneficial for crypto and Bitcoin market overall. And he believes most likely SEC will be forced or possibly willing to approve multiple Bitcoin spot ETF at once. Yes, that would be fair for the free market competition. Who will get the most asset at once? Well, I think BlackRock would be the one. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Comment below, subscribe and like this video.